There's a lot going on and it's hard to understand what it all means. Let's pull this chart apart to figure out some things, including how Australia compares to the rest of the world and what we can learn from the countries winning the COVID-19 fight. One concept that's important to understand is exponential growth, which is how viruses tend to spread. What might seem like a small difference can actually have enormous impacts on how many people are infected overall. A good way to think about the exponential spread is to look at how long it takes for the number of cases in a country to double. Initially, the differences might look small, but as time passes, they increase dramatically. After three weeks, the differences are stark. This is why early intervention is so important. Every infection avoided early on can have a huge positive impact. How does that play out in the real world? First, let's look at the source of the outbreak, China. In China, the virus initially spread exponentially, with the number of known cases repeatedly doubling in less than two days during the early part of the outbreak. But the country appears to have reduced that growth. Now coronavirus is spreading much more quickly in other parts of the globe. It's a bit crowded on the right, so let's narrow this down to a few key countries and bring them onto roughly the same timeline by changing it so that we start tracking cases day by day from the moment when each country hits 100 cases. And to decompress this section a bit, we'll change the vertical axis to a logarithmic scale. This scales it by powers of 10. It's a useful way to view coronavirus cases because the virus itself spreads exponentially. Confusing? Here's another way to think about it. If a country's cases are growing exponentially, it'll appear on this chart like this. You can see that for most countries like Italy and China, the line goes up steeply early on. Their case numbers grew very quickly. In Singapore and Japan though, the line is flatter. Their case numbers grew much more slowly. Let's zoom in further to when the virus first takes off. What we're ideally looking for are lower trend lines, more like Singapore and less like Italy. If the rate that people are being infected is slower, that means fewer people are seriously ill at the same time and that puts less pressure on hospitals. As you can see, Australia is still in the earlier stages of its outbreak. It hit 100 cases 51 days after China and 16 days after Italy. So what have other countries done to flatten the curve? Singapore reported its first case of coronavirus just one day before Australia's first case. However, like many Asian countries, it had learned important lessons from past epidemics. Within three days of its first case, it had implemented thermal scanning at Changi International Airport. A strict quarantine on anyone who had been in Hubei followed, and a few days later it barred all visitors who had been in China within the past 14 days. When there were 75 confirmed cases of coronavirus, the government issued a stay-at-home notice to everyone who had been in China in the previous two weeks. To date, Singapore has not closed schools. These measures may work in a city-state like Singapore, but would they work in a bigger country? And could you use them to control COVID-19 once it gets into the community? One country that has managed to drastically reduce new cases after an initial spike is South Korea. Like Singapore and another success story, Taiwan, South Korea's response was informed by shortcomings in fighting a previous disease. Even before the country had any confirmed cases, quarantine and screening measures were in place for arrivals from Wuhan. The first case was reported on January 20. A month later, the case numbers had leapt to 104. Two days later, the government raised the threat level. Lots of testing was a critical part of that model response. South Korea created a network of 96 public labs and began testing nearly 20,000 people a day. It has tested more people than most other countries. That testing regime may account for the steep initial rise in cases, but combined with aggressive contact tracing, it also means the country has been able to actively chase down cases of infection. This shows that the measures South Korea has implemented can work to change the trajectory of the spread, even once coronavirus establishes a major presence in the population. In the early stages of the outbreak, Italy and South Korea were on a similar trajectory. So why has Italy's health system been so overwhelmed and why have so many more people died? Italy reported its first coronavirus case two weeks after the first case in South Korea. The government immediately suspended flights from China, Hong Kong, Macau and Taiwan and declared a state of emergency. After the first coronavirus-related death was reported, Italy announced a cluster of 15 cases in the Lombardy region. Just over a week later, the number of cases there had exploded to over 1,100. It's too early to be certain of why cases spread uncontrolled in Italy, but from the start, the country's social distance messaging was muddled. Also, research shows the virus is disproportionately affecting older populations. People aged 70 and above account for nearly 90% of Italy's deaths. 
if our Asian neighbours are examples of what we should be aiming for, in the coming weeks the United States may offer another insight into what happens if the COVID-19 response is handled poorly. The US began screening travellers from Wuhan on January 17, and the first case was reported a few days later. It stopped visitors who had been in China from entering the US on January 31, and citizens who had been in China had to self-quarantine for 14 days. By mid-February, case numbers were up to 15, but by that stage, only 54 tests had been done. The US bungled the rollout of COVID-19 testing through a combination of flawed tests and bureaucratic red tape. By March 4, it had passed its 100th case, but had still only done just over 1,000 tests, at a time when the Korean government was testing 20,000 people per day. While the government was issuing public health notices about large gatherings, hand washing and other advice, no action was taken to enforce any social distancing. President Donald Trump, after initially downplaying the threat of the virus, abruptly changed tack, and a massive effort is underway to increase the amount of testing. But the response is still played with mismanagement. The United States is currently tracking at the highest rate of infection at a time when countries like South Korea and China have slashed the number of new infections. So what can Australia take from this? Around the world, there are three strategies that seem to be working. Acting early, extensive testing and contact tracing, and physical distancing. By far the most important measure for individual Australians is to drastically reduce the contact they have with other people. Until a vaccine or treatment is found, there isn't going to be a solution that will allow us to relax.